One of the most important concepts that microeconomics is concerned with is prices and the general level of prices. As you may remember from an earlier video, there are two types of statistics. Nominal statistics are economic statistics that are measured in current dollars and therefore are not adjusted for changes in the general level of prices. Nominal statistics generally don't tell you whether individuals are worse off or better off. Nominal statistics are, for example, the wage that a person earns, the prices of goods found in stores. Thus, if you're working, your paycheck is your nominal wage, and the price of the bottle of pop or soda is a nominal price. A real statistic is an economic statistic which uses dollars adjusted for price changes. The word real, in this case, is used to indicate how much prices and services the person is able to acquire. Real measures require a base year to serve as a point of comparison. Before looking at how this applies to GDP, let's take a minute to fully understand the idea of real statistics. Let's take an example of a person who works and uses some of their income to buy food. In 1970, a person earned $10,000 and spent $2,000 per year on food. The person's nominal income is $10,000 and the nominal cost of food is $2,000. Next, we revisit the person in 2012 and we discover that they are now earning $30,000 and spending $10,000 on the same food products as in 1970. The question we have to ask, were, in which year were they better off? If we focus on nominal values, it's clearly that they were better off in 2012 because they are earning more money, that is $30,000 in 2010, which is much greater than $10,000 in 1970. However, if we look more closely, we would notice that in 1970, the individual's food expenses only took up 20% of their income, but in 2012, it took 33% of their personal income. So let's look and see how, look at the impact of why in real statistics are important in discussing GDP. Let's just assume that our economy is very simple and only produces three goods. Oranges, coconuts, and pizzas. Oranges sell for 50 cents and 100 oranges are sold during the year, adding $50 to GDP. Coconuts sell for a dollar each and 300 coconuts are sold during the year, adding $300 to our GDP. Pizzas sell for $8 a piece and 2,000 pizzas are sold during the year, adding $16,000 to GDP. If we were to add up all three of these totals, we would see that the total amount of GDP is $6,350. Now, let us suppose that the following year the economy generates is $17,985 for GDP. The question what the economists want to know is the economy doing better in 2009 or worse? Well, it may seem like an easy question. It is frankly a difficult question to answer because GDP is dependent both on the quantity of goods produced and the price of goods. Let's examine the problem in more detail by looking at three different scenarios. The first scenario is that the quantity of goods produced has increased from the end of 2008 to the end of 2009. Let's look at the model. The top table shows the prices and the quantity for each good produced. As you may remember, the economy produces only three goods, oranges, coconuts, and pizzas. In 2008, oranges sell for 50 cents and 100 oranges are sold during the year, adding $50 to GDP. Coconuts sell for a dollar piece and 300 coconuts are sold during the year, adding $300 to GDP. Pizzas sell for $8 and 2,000 pizzas are sold during the year, adding $16,000 to GDP. Once again, we sum all that up and we get $16,350 for our GDP. In 2009, Oranges still, still sell for 50 cents and 110 oranges are sold the, during the year, adding $55 to GDP. Coconuts still sell for a dollar and 330, 330 coconuts are sold during the year, adding $330 to GDP. Pizzas continue to sell for $8 a piece and 2,200 pizzas are sold during the year, adding, adding $17,600 to GDP. The sum of the 
GDP is $17,985. It's important to notice that the number of goods has increased, but not the prices. Once again, oranges go from the number of oranges being sold go from 100, 100 in 2008 to 110 in 2009. Coconuts from 300 in 2008 to 330 in 2009. Pizzas from 2000 in 2008 to 2,222 nights. Also notice, once again, the prices have remained the same. The important conclusion from this scenario is that the economy has grown because the economy is producing more goods at the same prices and individuals in the economy are better off than they would have been in 2008. The second scenario is that the quantity of goods produced has remained the same from the end of 2008 to 2009, but the prices have changed upward. Let's look at the model. The top table shows that the prices and the quantity of each good produced. As you may remember, the economy produces only three goods, oranges, coconuts, and pizzas. In 2008, oranges sell for 50 cents and 100 are sold, adding $50 to GDP. Coconuts sell for a dollar piece and 300 coconuts are sold, adding $300 to GDP. Pizzas sell for $8 each and 2,000 pizzas are sold during the year, adding $16,000 to the GDP, giving us a total GDP of $16,350. In 2009, oranges now sell for $0.55 cents and 100 oranges are sold during the year, adding $55 to the GDP. Coconuts now sell for $1.10 each and 300 are produced adding $330 to GDP. Pizzas sell for $8.88 each and 2,000 pizzas are sold during the year adding $17,600 to GDP. Notice that the total GDP is $17,985 but it's important to notice that the price of the goods have increased not the quantity. Once again, the prices of oranges have increased from 50 cents to 55 cents. The price of coconut from a dollar to a dollar ten. Pizzas from eight dollars to eight eighty in 2009. Once again, the quantities have remained the same. It is an important conclusion from this scenario that GDP can increase merely by increasing the prices. However, consumers and firms will not be better off under the scenario because they are not consuming more goods because they are being forced to pay higher prices. Our third scenario is probably the most realistic of the three. Let's take a minute to review the situation. The top table shows prices and quantity for each good produced in 2008. As you may remember, the company economy produces only three goods, oranges, coconuts, and pizzas. In 2008, Oranges sell for 50 cents and 100 oranges are sold, adding $50 to GDP. Coconuts sell for a dollar each and 300 coconuts are sold during the year, adding $300 to GDP. Pizzas sell for $8 and 2,000 peaches are sold during the year, adding $16,000 to GDP, giving us a GDP of $16,350. In 2009, Oranges sell, sell for 55 cents and oranges, only 100 oranges are sold during the year, adding $55 to the GDP. Coconuts continue to sell for a dollar and 330 coconuts are sold during the year, adding $330 to GDP. Peaches now sell for $8.56 and 2,000 56 pizzas are sold during the year, adding $17,600 to GDP. Notice that the total amount of GDP is $17,985. Notice that some of the goods show an increase in price, like oranges. Some goods, like coconuts, show changes in the quantity produced, but no price increases. And once again, more realistic, pieces have increased both in price and in quantity. How can the economists untangle the increases in prices from increases in quantity to figure out the real value of GDP or the amount of increase in goods from increases in prices. To solve the pro to solve this problem, the economists would need to look through all the entries in the table and locate the goods which have price increases associated with them and then set the prices back to the year that we're going to compare the current year with. 
The two goods which have price increases associated with them are oranges and pizzas. So we're going to need to turn back their prices to the previous year. The economists would use the prices from the previous or base year and substitute in the prices into the table for 2009. In this example, the economists would replace the 55 cents for the oranges in 2009 with 50 cents from 2008 and replace the $8.56 the price of pizzas in 2009 with $8 the price of pizzas in 2008. Next, using the number of oranges from 2009, 100, and multiplying by the 2008 price would add $50 to GDP. The economists would then repeat the same process with pieces using the $8 and the 2,056 2, pieces for the quantity, equaling 16,448. When we added the totals for all three of the commodities, we would end up with 16,828. And if you'll notice that the real GDP of this economy is over $1,000 less than the original nominal calculation of $17,985. In the next section, we'll show you how to calculate using a formula the nominal or the GDP deflator and the real value of a dollar as well as a price index.